In this video we're going to be taking a look at a subject that's super interesting to me and that is the AK-47 parts kit or in this case an AK-74 parts kit. Over here we're looking at an AK-74, a Bulgarian version. Uh, thanks to the guys at Tucson Guns they supplied this rifle for us so we could use it as a comparison to this parts kit. So the parts in this box are the parts that you'd make use to make up something like this if you decided to take on the project of building an AK-47. And thanks to the people at Arms of America, uh, full disclosure, both Tucson Guns and Arms of America are sponsors here. One of the ways we're able to bring such cool guns and uh, stuff into our videos is through our sponsors. So uh, uh, we just got this in the mail. This is how it comes. Uh, obviously we did get a hand-picked kit. Um, you pay a little premium whenever you buy an AK parts kit or pretty much anything of this type of nature um, to have the guys at the warehouse go through and pick you one that you know is going to have all uh, good looking parts and that. Um, for me, I don't care so much about the parts on the rifle, of course that's important, but I'm a bayonet guy so I asked him to get me one with a nice bayonet. So we'll uh, put the camera on a tripod here and we'll take a look and see what kind of parts are in this box. Okay, so I've got the camera up on a tripod, and we're going to dig into the parts kit. Um, most parts kits come in a box about this size, easy to ship, easy to store, but it gives you a pretty good indication that, you know, it's nothing like a regular size rifle in here. It's literally parts. So I'm just busting through the tape. And let's dig in here. So I've got my invoice, you know, nothing's free. So nice invoice here. And this one runs about 340 bucks. It's not cheap, but it's not expensive either considering what you're getting. Um, 340 bucks. I've got this one with the accessory kit. You can get it without the accessories. I think the pouch and the bayonet and um, it's a little cheaper, 320 or something. So uh, you can check these out on their website, though. I'm not selling them. I'm just letting people know where I get them because that's a question we get quite a bit. So I'm just going to start digging in. You saw I pulled out a couple of pieces of newspaper. I just checked real quick, and they're not cool. They're not like Russian newspaper or Bulgarian newspaper or anything. They're Flagstaff newspaper. So um, I always check because every once in a while you do get newspapers from all over the place. Anyway, um, busting into the kit here, we've got the uh, magazine pouch for the magazines and it has a pouch here for the oil can and it looks like there's a, a snap on this one otherwise it looks like it's in good condition of course like I say I did ask for a hand pick kit so it paid a little extra premium so that they go through and make sure I get one with nice wood in my case I wanted a cool bayonet looks like I got one uh, looks like it's in real good shape. Of course, I'm looking through the cellophane, but it does have the leather frog, the belt attachment, so it's complete, and it's the correct one for the rifle, which is always a plus. Looks like we've got a stock here. It's an AK-74 stock. It's got the lightning cut, and you can see it here. Mine looks to be a little bit different shade of wood, but the Bulgarian of this age and everything are a solid wood, so that'll be neat. We've got a barrel, and it looks to me like this is a U.S. barrel, so unfortunately these kits came in after they started uh, being jerks about the barrels, so they cut up the barrels coming across, and you start with an American barrel now, a U.S. made barrel. This looks like to be the dust cover, the bolt carrier, the spring, some of the smaller parts all wrapped up. We've got a cool chocolate colored uh, magazine with a Circle 21 on it. I like that. Got the original pistol grip. Looks to be in fairly decent shape. Full of cosmoline. I just stuck my finger in there. Literally caked with cosmoline, if you can see that in the video. We've got the forward hand guards, top and bottom. Again, solid wood. Just looking through the cellophane, they look to be almost the same color as these. And again, for an AK, if it's your first AK, big deal. Maybe go get a washer or, you know, pay a couple of hundred bucks less for something that's different but uh, if you're collecting AKs this is one of the reasons you collect them this wood you know is unique the Bulgarians 
paid a little bit more attention, I guess, or they just felt better about putting some nice wood on there for whatever reasons. They've got some nice solid wood here, and that's the reason you collect something is to get its variances or its versions, and that's one of the differences on a Bulgarian. Now we're looking at some of the rest of the metal parts, and then before I throw the box away, let's grab that uh, cleaning rod out of there. So that's the empty box. I'm going to end up using that box for storage, though. So basically the cleaning rod seems to be about the longest item in that box, so you can tell it's all in its parts. I'm going to leave it here for a moment and readjust everything, but this bag contains the cut-up trunnion, or excuse me, the cut-up receiver with the trunnion in it, the trigger guard, we'll take a look at what condition that's in, and then the internal parts. So all the good stuff is in here. We've got our bolt carrier and, and receiver cover, uh, cleaning rod, the wood fixtures, bayonet, the barrel, the magazine, the pistol grip. It looks like we've got all the parts. Now I'm just going to pause the video here for a moment and uh, put them out. Okay, and I probably stopped the high speed by now, and we're looking at these parts. So I probably could have explained them as I was opening them up, but I figured I'd uh, just go through them like this. So again, we're looking at the complete rifle up top. Pretty much a real good example of what these parts, once they're assembled, would look like. So I put the camera back up on the tripod. I just uh, felt it was a little too wobbly um, holding it. So uh, kind of digging into the AK-74 parts kit. Again, this is a Bulgarian kit. Um, this is what the finished rifle would look like. And these are the parts that make up that rifle. So um, I guess we'll just start at the back and work our way forward. Um, first off, the parts kit comes with everything that you're going to need to build the rifle minus a couple of things and first that's the rifle itself which in the US uh, rifle is a receiver so this is an AK-47 receiver and this has a serial number on it this is the rifle as far as the law is concerned all the rest of this stuff is just parts it's just pieces of metal that happen to make up you know a rifle but this is the part that's regulated this is the part that you have to sign your name when you buy and this is the part that um, is destroyed when they chop these up in, in this case, Bulgaria. So that's what you see here is sort of the remains of the actual receiver. And it can't be put back together. It's missing a part. It's got a hole through the area that would make the full auto parts work. And the U.S. made receivers don't have that ability. So that's the few minor differences between the U.S. made receiver and the actual receiver. Um, 
So um, that's a part that's going to be missing. Uh, for whatever reasons, they decided to enforce a, a law, I guess, that says that it wouldn't allow barrels to be imported. So what we've got here is a U.S. made barrel blank, which is still going to work with the parts, and uh, but it's not, you know, the actual barrel um, that came with the, the rest of the gun. And then the other parts are these trigger parts that are the full auto garbage. Of course, we can't assemble full autos anymore, and these parts are just useless. There's no way to modify them or anything, so um, it's easier to just throw those away or get rid of them. This is the third pin that you would need if you had full auto parts, so you don't need that pin. Uh, otherwise, everything else is pretty much good to go. There are a few parts that typically people are going to swap out. Uh, I almost always swap out the pistol grip. As nice as this pistol grip is and as cool as it is to have the real pistol grip on it, I just find it so easy to remove it and put on a U.S. made part um, for 922R compliance. 922R is a law that regulates how many U.S. made parts and how many foreign made parts can be on a rifle that's assembled here. And uh, again, it's something that you're hands on 90% of the time when you're shooting it. It's not something you see very often, so it's an easy part for me to swap out, so I do. The next part I almost always swap out, in fact I think I've swapped it out on every one of my AKs, is the gas uh, uh, piston. And that's just screwed on, there's a hole drilled in, and then there's a pin in there. So if you look real hard, you know, or maybe scrape the bluing up a little bit, you find the pin. I use my big vise out in the shop, and I just push that pin out with my vise. I unscrew it, screw in the new US version, drill a hole, put the pin in, and it's good to go. And that way it's a part that no one ever sees. But if anyone ever questions my 922R compliance, it's a, it's a U.S. part that I can show them real easily. Um, the other parts that people switch out are the stock and hand guards. I try not to do that. If you use a U.S. made magazine, it's got three parts on the 922R list. The base plate, the body, and the follower. So um, what I'll try to do, if it works, is take a U.S. magazine, take the follower, or excuse me, the follower and the base plate, swap them over if I can, just the follower if I have to, or buy a US made magazine from someplace like KVAR up in uh, Las Vegas. Um, great made, uh, great quality magazines, very uh, accurate to, you know, state, shape and style, and uh, not expensive either. It's just a matter of getting one when they have them in stock. Um, so those are the parts that most people swap out to keep in compliance with 922R. Those are a couple of parts that you can't use or you wouldn't want to use. And then a couple of the parts that um, we're kind of forced to use at this point as builders, like the U.S. barrel. So digging into the actual fun parts, the parts that are from the actual AK-74, I guess first off, just in case people aren't aware of it, this was an AK-74 at one time, a full auto, actual assault rifle, used in Bulgaria, and judging from the condition of the kit, used in Bulgaria, not just sitting in an armory, um, not just you know looked at occasionally. It looks like it was actually shot a bunch. Um, not too much that it's worn out, but enough that the there's some wear on the parts. And I personally look for that. When I'm buying a parts kit, I'm buying the history. I'm more of a collector than a shooter. Um, I've got an AK that I'll take you know if, if I needed to shoot, but for the rest of them, I like them to be collectors. Um, items more than shootable items so I'm looking for that characteristics um, or excuse me the character in the stock I'm looking for engravings the Yugo uh, parts kits a lot of times will have some really cool engravings and modifications done uh, the Bulgarian stuff they didn't uh, carve into their stuff ever but um, you can you know it's definitely a difference between this lower hand guard that's got some dinks and I think the quality of this camera will show that there's some dinks in it and dents uh, there's some places where the varnish isn't perfect, where this one's either been refinished or was just not used as much, so it's in much nicer condition. Which is great if you're buying a rifle, you know, to have, but again, if I'm building one like this, the paint job, the paint is, is worn off, you know, it's been used, so that's what I'm looking for, some character. Anyway, um, so this was an AK-74, full auto, you know, 100% legit. Um, at some point, they decided it's coming out of service. Uh, you know, there's no more wars or whatever. Let's chop it up. And they took it all apart, for the most part, 
and then this last part, the actual part that's the rifle, they they de de they demilled it, they demilitarized it, and by chopping it into parts, that accomplished the uh, requirements that this can't be put back together. Of course, you could try to put it back together, but you'd be wasting your time. It's just not worth it, especially when the availability of a uh, U.S.-made semi-auto receiver is, you know, just a couple hundred bucks away. So um, it's chopped into pieces. But it's, it's interesting that this parts kit comes with this, uh, the, the actual pieces, because it tells you a lot about the rifle. Um, it tells you some things like how the spot welds looked, how the dimples looked, um, how the rivets were done. It shows you the selector markings here, what the selector indentation looked like and what the actual um, selector markings were. It shows you how the dimples on the X and Ys are. So these are all important for a collector. Um, the dimple here where the, the trigger pin those are things that when you're recreating this rifle if you want to get it as true to accurate as possible these are some clues as to what accurate was so that's really nice to get these parts you don't always get them for example this has the front trunnion in it which is the part that attach the barrel gets pushed into it has this pin that goes through uh, this barrel needs to be cut still so you would push this barrel in of course, it's under some. I need to have more, more pressure than I can apply here. Once it's in place, though, about this deep, then you would drill a hole through this uh, hole. Then this pin would go into place, and that was that pin would hold your barrel. Of course, there's some things to keep in mind, like head spacing, where this comes in contact with the bolt. Um, you know, all that. Those measurements are important. So um, that kind of stuff is done during the manufacturer I'm not going to get into all that but to show you that those parts are all there and how they relate this trunnion is sometimes just removed you can see on the back that they just took simply took a grinder um, pretty abusive they took out these rivets and this rear trunnion came out of here it was in here they removed the rivet heads pulled it out that's a part this is a second part they did these chops and a lot of times they'll do the same up here. They'll remove those rivets and leave it. But, well, not a lot of times. Sometimes they'll do that. Um, but in this case, they left it together. So you can have to take this apart yourself. But like I say, it gives you some clues as to what the original looked like. Down here, it's nice that they used a saw to do this. Sometimes they'll use a torch. And what a torch will do is heat the metal and kind of screw with the uh, temper. So it's nice that they use a saw. Makes it a nice clean D-mill. Also, the trigger guard isn't all bent up. You want to be careful with this. You wouldn't want to um, ne neglect this parts kit when it's being stored because if this were to get all bent up you'd have to figure out how to bend that back to shape. So it's nice that it's all pristine still. Um, basically I would demill it from the inside. I would remove these rivets from in order to get the parts off without damaging them or scuffing them or anything. So you've got the receiver there and the hammer and spring and a little pin here is covered in cosmoline. This is one of the few parts that's just caked in cosmoline. Um, but you can reuse the hammer, I guess, and uh, this, everybody uses their spring again. These are neat springs. The Russians did a double twist, so the spring can actually break and then still work. It's kind of neat. Uh, the pistol grip uh, for 922R, I usually swap out the pistol grip. It's easy enough. As I mentioned, it's caked with cosmoline. It's a neat one because of the plastic or whatever you'd call this. I'd have to call it plastic more than anything else. I guess it's a polymer. But uh, it's just a neat feel to this one. Uh, the screw that holds that on. The magazine again is really neat. Uh, but a lot of times guys will just go with the US version. Uh, some of the stuff, not this one. This is a Pro Mag. It's an okay one for the range. But uh, Kvar out of Las Vegas makes some nice ones. Uh, so you can get something that looks very similar to this, but U.S. made to give you three U.S. parts for that 922R compliance stuff. Um, digging through here some more, we've got the pins. This looks like a virgin part. In other words, this looks like a part that hadn't really been on the rifle, but it's possible that they just drifted these pins out and pulled it out, um, and it just was in good shape. Um, that's probably the case, but uh, it definitely looks like a nice clean part. This is the uh, zigzag brake. A three-piece brake that's really cool. This part by itself is just a neat part to have. Um, so it's on its uh, front sight post, and again, these would just be drifted on or pu pushed onto the new barrel, holes drilled, and then push these pins through to hold it in place. That's something that doesn't sound that difficult, but of course, you know, you want to do it right so that as you're looking down the barrel, it's not canted left or right. Uh, I've got the 
uh, gas block, which is what allows the gas to come up. It connects with the front here. This is not, it was painted and it looks like it's in definitely used condition. Um, Andrew up at Arms of America though, uh, and Mike up there know that I'm more interested in a rifle or a parts kit that was actually in use somewhere. So that's the kind of character I'm looking for in a parts kit. Um, a lot of guys though want it to look brand new, like this one where without really inspecting it, I'm guessing that this was probably just a really nice parts kit. It doesn't look as though it was painted here in America when it was assembled. But this one was assembled from similar parts here in America. And I think this was just a different parts kit, a parts kit that had a cleaner, a more, or a, a better condition, a less used set of parts, where mine is a little bit used. Got the dust cover, and basically the same there. Again, this one just has a little bit more use to it. Bolt carrier, I usually replace this gas piston, or the piston and done and you've got a US part that no one will ever see and no one you know never is really an issue as far as making the gun look historic or look accurate and uh, you know if anyone ever gives you any question about it in uh, 922R compliant uh, you can show them that you've got a US part in there. Uh, the spring looks like it's in great shape. We've got the two wood screws that are going to go through the top of the trunnion to hold the uh, stock in place. The stock looks like it was, again, used, so it was at first varnished, and it looks as though it's hasn't been abused, but it's been used. No, no cleaning kit in the in the stock. I'm probably missing some parts here. Let's talk about this awesome bayonet. Again, bayonets are my thing, so I like a good bayonet. And this one's neat. Um, it's not in 100% brand new condition, but that's fine because I've got those type already. I don't really care about that so much. This one is the condition I like. A bayonet in. The frog exists. It's with it. It looks like it's been used. In fact, it's been used so much that it's been repaired. I love that because, uh, again, anybody can get one that's new mint condition, but having one that was actually seen some use is neat. Looks like on their uh, wrist strap right here, they, um, they twisted it, and I've never seen that done before. Sure does look neat. I mean, a great idea. Why didn't I think of that kind of thing? Opening it up, the spring is really loose. Again, indication that this thing's been around the block a few times. A um, lot of wear from just being probably in a box or something. Uh, marks are all correct, so it's definitely Bulgarian. And uh, just a nice conditioned bayonet, actually. Except for uh, the weak spring, but again, who cares? It's not like I'm going to carry this bayonet. It's going to go in the collection, and it's going to be a valued addition to the collection. It's a neat one. Anyway, that's the correct bayonet for this AK-74. Uh, AK-74 bayonets don't have that bulbous back end that the AKM, or most people call them AK-47 bayonets have. Um, that's the earlier style. This is the more modern style. Of course, the newest style is a black, and it has a spear point. Totally different bayonet. Um, so you get the bayonet when you get the accessory uh, kit, and I think that includes the... Well, I know it includes the pouch and the bayonet. But I'm not sure if the magazine is part of that accessory kit or not. I think I mentioned the bandit is, or, or the uh, magazine's a cool brown color. It's kind of neat. So that's uh, a parts kit, and that's the uh, AK-47 it m turns into. Um, I wanted to do this video, one, to show how cool these parts kits are. Two, to show people, because no one ever remember, no one really realizes that even though these are called parts kits, it's not exactly like you're going to, obviously you're not going to take this and put it together in a few hours in your shop. Um, maybe after you've built a few dozen of them, you can get to that point if you have all the fixtures and jigs and uh, tools that you need to put them together. Um, but basically, this is what a parts kit is. You have to have quite a few parts, quite a few fixtures for your tools. Large equipment is definitely a plus. I mean, sure, people are putting these together on a hammer and anvil in Pakistan, but, you know, here, it's just a lot better to have the equipment to do it right. I'd much uh, rather see people uh, spend a couple of bucks send it to a builder lots of good builders in America at this point so uh, you know keep somebody in business send it to a builder get a gun back that's going to be you know a great operating rifle for you and have some resale value if you want to get rid of it because it'll be built by a reputable builder and like I say keep uh, you know keep the money flowing that way uh, you know they keep these builders in business we're going to have them around for a while 
So that's the AK-474 parts kit, and uh, stay tuned to more of these. This is this is what I like to play with, and uh, I've got a couple of them. So if this video is popular, we'll we'll do more of them.